Speaking of uh, uh, guys who cracked the list, and for me, this guy is a, a little bit of a lightning rod because I don't know which way to go about this. I don't know whether to be really excited that there's a guy who's had very little minor league exposure that has a chance to be really special, or if I look at the rest of the list and see the guys and say, how are they all behind the guy that's barely played? And that is Grant Taylor. So mm-hmm. explain to Grant Taylor, uh, heat to the layman, he's ranked number five on the list. I'm guessing most of the people, half of the people in the comments probably don't even know who Grant Taylor is. Explain why he's so high and and what do you and the the Future Sox team like about him? So, uh, you know, one of the things that, so he pitched in the uh, Cape Cod League before um, he ended up needing Tommy John. And he was there and people said that he was so electric that, you know, some people even say, and I'm not saying that there's, you know, like what the validity of this this uh, statement is, mm-hmm. but they said that he was more electric than Skeens. <laughs> that's 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 lofty. Even if it was only a couple of people saying that, that's lofty. That's that's a, that's a that's a big thing to say. Um, but um, so he goes and uh, goes to start for LSU, and ends up needing Tommy John in uh, in the spring, and. Um, so he sat White Sox draft him and um, he was basically ready to go uh, right at the beginning of this year. He was in uh, spring training, throwing down in Arizona with the guys. And one of the things that uh, everybody said about him down there was that he's basically like having another pitching coach there at the facility. And uh, he's one of those guys that makes the guys around him better. And uh, his stuff is just gross. I think he had like 32 strikeouts to two walks in a ball. Right. So um, just eye popping numbers. Could, I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> even the short stint the there. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's slated to be in the Arizona fall league because he missed the time. Uh, he right. had like, and this was it. From what I understand, what I was told was that they were going to baby the F out of this guy because they Reasonable. didn't want to push him, but that the lat strain that he had was nothing serious and they just didn't want to push it because they didn't feel that they needed to. Right. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, yeah. I was going to say, because they did give him quite a bit of a long layoff afterwards. It might lead you to believe, like, oh, oh this is, you know, this is more trouble. But uh, it, it, it will be interesting to see how he looks. In Arizona Fall League uh, against good competition. I mean, generally Arizona yeah. Fall League is pretty pretty good competition, uh, um, and and it's usually uh, light on the pitching because the pitchers are usually the guys that just need more work, not necessarily the uh, the top guys there. So it yeah. should be interesting to see if he shines. But uh, yeah, I mean that like uh, part of me is like we've we've graduated a bunch of pitching. I, there's other guys known, and then there's there's this guy laying back in the cut that might also be real good. Like these other guys are like. It's exciting. I, I'm I'm eager to see what happens, but I appreciate you laying that out there, Ian, because I don't think a lot of people have heard about him, or, or there's not been a lot of buzz about him. And so you guys putting him up there higher, I think, is a real service to Sox fans, so that we can kind of like start looking at him, get get honed in on on Grant. 